Nice. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for, for being here. Um, again, my name is Heather Bruner, and I've been in technology now for 26 years. Um, I started coding in COBOL um, and uh, learned uh, kind of the first wave of technology to basically help to automate um, kind of back office systems and a lot of kind of the kind of first generation of technology. And then in the past 26 years, I've seen every wave of technology from client server to ERP technologies, uh, the rise of enterprise software, the rise of software as a service, social solutions um, uh, and social commerce, and, then, and now I am the CEO of a company called WP Engine, and WP stands for WordPress, um, and we are a platform for helping our customers to build and manage websites and applications built on WordPress. And WordPress, ha as an open source technology, is really dominating the web. Um, over 27% of all websites in the world 27% of all websites in the world are built on WordPress. And not only the, you might consider the long tail of the web, you know, the small websites, but actually 27% of the top 10,000 sites by traffic as well. So it's actually quite an interesting phenomenon to be a part of a company that is really helping to power really the voice and technology of so many different types of businesses. And so um, I'm gonna just share with you a little bit about um, just WP Engine, just because I'm gonna use WP Engine as kind of a platform to talking about really something I'm super passionate about, which is building really diverse companies and organizations and tell you a little bit about what we're doing, how we're doing it. We've talked a lot about today about some of the problems and challenges around women in tech, tech uh, diversity in tech. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what are we doing and how are we building and driving change. And so really fundamentally for WP Engine, like really for us is like our, our purpose is to help our customers to win online, whatever winning is to them, if that's uh, revenue, if that's subscriber, if that's something you know, to do with uh, fundraising, however it is uh, uh, that they're, they're defining success, we're there to help power that. Um, and we've been a, a company that has been growing uh, dramatically over the last we've, uh, six years. We were founded in 2010. We've been going through you know, tremendous, tremendous growth. Just in the last three years alone, we've more than 10 x our revenue, our customers, um, our employees, and we're growing very, very rapidly. And while that growth is really interesting in that we have you know, 55,000 customers in 130 countries and all these kinds of things are interesting statistics, but really what's more interesting is how we're going about it. How are we creating a company that has both very strong financial performance, very strong customer satisfaction performance, and building a company that really is really unique. And what I think what we're, we're doing in terms of our environment is building a company that really is focused, it's consciously focused on building and incorporating diversity as a core part of organization. Um, I've never been part of an organization in technology in 26 years this diverse. Um, it, most of the organizations I've been a part of are much like what Monica talked about earlier, where I was the only woman on a team, perhaps the only woman at the executive table, um, where uh, there was not a lot of diversity in terms of either gender or age or background. And one of the things we're really proud of is that we're building a company now that 65% of our executive team are women. Women lead our, again, the CEO, CFO, Chief Financial Officer, Chief Marketing Officer, and also our um, SVP, or, or Senior Vice President of Engineering, are all women. Um, we have 31% of our non-executive management are women. We have almost 30% of our company overall are women. Um, and then another thing in terms of just overall kind of ethnic background, 30% of our team is non-white. Um, and so again, uh, this you know, for us is something that's really important is to not only to have that gender diversity, but also to have background in ethnic diversity. Something that's pretty unique, I've never been part of a technology company that did not require a college degree. And at WP Engine, we've decided to actually open up and allow for people to apply who have the skills, the work ethic, the service, um, kind of our, that really match our culture. 
um, and to allow that, and we now have 33%, a third of our company does not have a college degree. But even despite that, we see the level of progression and movement from our company and people. This is across all different types of roles. This is not just in terms of just junior roles, but we're actually looking to kind of basically base, look at people and their merits of their backgrounds, their expertise, and also their potential for also for some of our entry-level roles as well. And we also have 5% of our company self-identifies as LGBTQ. I'm not sure if that, that do you guys use that same term? Okay, great. Okay, so, that, so basically for people to say, I'm willing to kind of self-identify that I'm, that I'm openly gay, I'm openly transgender, et cetera, in our, our organization, I feel accepted and, um, and feel uh, you know, like this is a place I can be myself. And so, and also for us, it's really important. We have made it very clear that for all roles across the company, people will get paid equally for equal work, equal pay. And again, this seems so, like, it's crazy, it's 2016 that we're having to talk about this, but unfortunately, it's not necessarily the norm. It's not the norm in tech, and it's not the norm in many industries that you have this type of level of diversity and or so also this level of focus around equality and pay. Um, and I know this, you know, for us in the U U.S., I think, you know, we look to Sweden and we see a country that is really no renowned for its, uh, for its uh, progressive um, stance on women in the workplace, um, on health care, on leave, and on pay. And so I think that, you know, I know that also but the discussion this morning, there's still a lot of work to do, even here in Sweden, there's a lot of work to do for us in, in, in the U.S., as well as a lot of work for us to do in the global technology community around continuing to be a, a force for diversity and for this type of change. And I really believe that diversity attracts diversity. Uh, when I joined the company, we were about 40 people, and there was only a couple of women. There were only a few people that uh, didn't have a college degree, only a few people that you know, were not white. Um, and so one of the things that we saw is as people, um, we started to hire people and kind of open the aperture for what we would allow in the company or kind of accept or kind of welcome into the company, we saw that more and more people then, as they found this being a place that they could be themselves, really focus on our core values, that they would then attract and basically refer other people. So actually, almost 60% of our employees come referred from another employee. So again, there's a very powerful effect um, around that, around helping people say, this is a place I want to work, this is a place where I can be myself, this is a place where I can, be, I can grow, I can advance, and then attracting and really energizing other people to come and be, look at the company. And so for us, you know, we are on a you know, very, very conscious mode to in increase diversity. I'm not sure how many of you guys, if anybody here does yoga, a um, couple of people do yoga. Okay, well, my instructor, I'm a, I love yoga. Fabio, I don't believe you. Um, so, uh, so my instructor always opens up every class with set an intention for your practice today. Set an intention for your practice. So again, like that for us, it's like I think for all of us here, you know, you here who are leaders, who are entrepreneurs, who are um, you know folks who are really driving change in your business, set an intention for diversity. I hear a lot from p folks like, well, how do you add more women? How do you add more people of color? How do, you, how do you attract more people? Well, first off, you have to be intentional that that's what you want. And you have to basically say it out loud in how you communicate to the world about your brand, about your company, to whether it be to customers, whether it be to recruiting, whether it be to your employees, and say, we're setting an intention that we, dis we desire to be an accepting, open, and diverse organization. So I think that that's you know, really, really critical in this journey. And I think another thing for us is, you know, it's, you know, our, we really believe and we've taken time um, to, to really say, these are our core values as a company. And I'll share, some, share them with you a little bit, not in a lot of detail, but just hit some of the highlights. But really for us, it's like really a big part of embracing diversity is that people actually feel like their voice can be heard, that, that it, they really do matter and that they can be themselves. Um, and so, because if you can say, well, oh, we welcome women, but then as soon as you, you're there at the workplace, you get shut down, you get, you know, you don't have opportunity, et cetera, or that I come into the organization and I'm gay and I, my uh, opinions or my beliefs, I feel like I have to hide it. Well, that's not creating diversity because it, it basically, that basically shuts down what, the very thing that we're trying to embrace and to try to make, to drive that difference. So really for us, our core values really are at the heart of how we think about creating that diverse background. 
So our first value, and I'm not going to go through all this, I'm just going to kind of hit what I think is a, a highlight here, but our first value is do the right thing. And really the point that I think is really helping to drive that is that to embrace the difference is a, is a first statement. When it's right for the customer and right for the company and you're proud of your decision, you've done the right thing. So what that means is that in the same situation, there can be two answers. That we're going to entrust you to do what you think is right, and you're going to use your common sense, whether you're the office manager, you're a, you know, first line junior engineer, or you're an executive. Do the right thing, use your judgment, and be empowered to do that. So again, that's you know, one way that we really focus on helping people to embrace um, who they are and that we want them to, to, to use their judgment, that we've hired them for a role and that we tr and trust them. And if everyone else is doing that, then all together we're going to be continuously kind of doing and finding that thing that's right. The next one is customer inspired. And I think really what this is all about, when, the one thing I'd say here is that for everyone in the company to know that what's fueling us, what's fueling us in our, in our business is the, the ability to represent what's best for the customer. Um, and so if everyone's thinking about what's best for the customer and think about that, whether if I'm in support and I'm giving ideas around product or I'm in the product organization, I'm spending time helping on sales calls, if I am uh, an executive who then needs to kind of, kind of come into a situation to help at the front line and support, that everyone's thinking about that and kind of bringing that energy together and that an idea can come from anyone. Um, as long as it's basically trying to focus on how is it going to advance and try to help our customer, that we are going to be open to that. It doesn't have to be that customer ideas are only coming from the people who talk to customers all day. They can be coming from, you know, throughout the company and that we really want to be driving, driving that level of openness. Where the best gets better, again, this is another, another, environment, another thing that I would say is really important is that people really feel like they're um, given the opportunity, so once you come in to the organization, that it's a, it's a two-way agreement or two-way pact between the organization and you around how you're going to advance, that everyone should have a plan for the future and be thinking about how they're going to continue to grow and evolve their careers. Um, and again, that's something that's very important. So just in the, this year alone, 20% of our organization has had a promotion. Um, because, you know, again, you know, focusing on how do we continue to grow and invest from within, how are we investing in training, how are we investing in, in the development of people and helping them continue to grow. And again, you know, this is across all spectrums in terms of, you know, the, you know, uh, all organizations and also across, um, you know, kind of all different types of roles. Built, built to last, this is a, you know, kind of like for us, what this, you know, for me really um, kind of focuses on is what's important, you know, that we're having a long-term relationship with, with our employees, that we're in it for their success, their success is our success, and that we're thinking about building that long-term um, point of view over time, um, both with them in terms of as employees, but with our teams, with our company, with our customers, and kind of taking that long-term perspective that we're invested in their success, and I think, again, that comes back in spades from our, from our employees and their excitement, they're, they're feeling like we're really investing in them. And then aspiring to lead and committed to giving back. You know, one of the things we talk about all the time that everyone in our organization, at uh, every role and every, every function, everyone is a leader and that everyone has a potential to, to grow and make that impact, that leadership is not a position, leadership is action. And so what actions are we gonna be taking to aspire to continue to lead in our, in our industry, in our community, in the open source community that we work and then we, that's a big part of how we thrive. So again, that whole spirit of, of our core values all coming together to say, you can be yourself, you're empowered, you can make an impact on our customers, on our company. You're an owner. All of our employees are owners in the business. They all have equity, um, no matter what level they are. Um, and that you can lead and help us continue. So again, like back to that whole thing around uh, bringing together the diversity is really, I think, part of it is it's kind of that state of mind. And here's a couple other things I wanted to kind of share. So kind of taking on that, building on that foundation of your values is really how are you intentionally embracing diversity? And the first one I want to talk about is agree to disagree. Um, I think in t uh, too many organizations, they don't embrace difference and also don't you know, consciously help to create an environment that allows for junior people to disagree with higher pe you know, people who have more experience. And so a lot of things we try to do is really make sure that we are our values um, and ensure that your values, if you think about for your, your business, how do you allow for that individual freedom to decide and act? Just like we talked about, do the right thing. 
Um, encourage discord and disagreement. So when I meet with all of our new employees, I tell them, you are welcome to disagree with me. I want you to disagree with me, and I will disagree with you as long as we do it in a constructive fashion, um, and we can work together, then ideas then um, can flow. And so I think if people know that, okay, it's okay to say I don't agree. I think that's a few, too few organizations cause that, so therefore there's only one right answer, there's only one way for things to get done, and it's top down, versus allowing for information and ideas ideas and things to flow and for there to be those disagreements, because disagreements usually surface more creativity and better ideas. And then also, you know, treating your team like equals. So we host a meeting every week, um, a, kind of a weekly town hall for all of our organization, and we share with them, it's kind of like the family table. Here's the good, the bad, and the ugly of what just happened. Here's some of the things that are great news that happened. Here's some things that we need to go work on. Uh, we share openly share our financials. So we teach everybody how to read our um, financial statements. We teach them what the key KPIs are for the organization. Um, and for a lot of people coming into the, to our team, this is the first time they've ever been exposed to that. And it unlocks them in terms of their ability to really see how their role and how they can make a change or make an impact into the business. And so again, treating your team with, again, really kind of embracing that kind of openness. Um, and then again, we already talked about this, and you really ensure that you know, you're consciously embracing equality of pay um, and that you're you know, adv advocating for that because, again, I, you know, my, my belief is that should be the norm. Open your doors wider. Um, share information and opportunities more freely. So again, you know, consider uh, in your organization, could you actually open the aperture in terms of applicants for certain roles? Could you actually um, embrace people who don't have a college degree into that? What we've found is a lot of times it is as we have people who have just not had the financial um, opportunity, they have the intellect, they have this, the potential, they have the heart, they're willing to work hard, they just haven't been able to afford to go to college. So, and they've been using open source or WordPress or other types of technology as a way to put food on the table, but no one will give them a break. No one will give them that first leg up into a tech company. And so we find those people, you know, come, when they come in, and then we invest in training. So kind of like the you know, kind of invest inside concept is we really, really invest in internal training and development to make sure that when we bring those people in, that they can have the get the right training and be ready for their role and as you know, kind of they hit the floor, you know, working as a junior engineer or whether they're working in sales or working in our support organization. Um, and so the other thing we've do is we've done is we've we really have worked on internships across every single function, including HR, finance, um, engineering, sales, every marketing, every single function. We really open up. Um, our uh, aperture around working with interns, um, both uh, undergraduate interns as well as people from uh, different types of coding academies um, or, uh, or, or technology academies that may be doing workforce development, as well as MBAs. And that has been phenomenal. And those interns, um, we have an incredible rate of those interns turning into employees, but also they come in with a really fresh perspective. It's really great for them. And then also, again, we treat them as prospective employees, so they get to attend all of our meetings, our trainings, our, you know, open book management, you know, in terms of our financials, et cetera. So they really become a part of our, become a part of our team. Um, and then also we sponsor scholarships um, for coding and workforce development academies. Um, and that's been another really great partnership for us with the community to find people that again, maybe have just not had enough opportunity that are trying to get that leg up uh, for themselves. And so how we can sponsor scholarships for those people and then perhaps then give them an opportunity to become an intern, et cetera, with our organization. And again, that's been a phenomenal partnership. And I talked about this before, again, when I first joined, when our CFO first joined um, our team, I told her, we're gonna practice open book management. And she was like, what? Hell no. I'm like, no, we're gonna practice open book management. She's like, I've never seen it before. How we do it? I said, well, because we're gonna teach. We're gonna teach our employees how to read a financial statement. And we're gonna keep teaching, and we're gonna keep teaching, and keep repeating, and show them how this how, how it works, and trust me, they're going, it's going to create an incredible return because people are going to know and be able to see and put their role into context and be able to really understand the business. So if we share with them how we're doing our financial performance, we share with them our strategic priorities, we share with them 
um, you know, the, how things are going and what's going wrong, not going right, um, together, everyone's going to be more motivated and more energized to go and help drive, our, drive the business and to drive really fantastic results, which we have seen in spades, you know, in terms of our business. We've been very fortunate that our employees are constantly thinking about how to make things better. Um, because of that, we are giving them the context, we're setting the direction, and then they're helping to come in with being educated and very energized about helping to, to make it happen. And then um, invest from the inside. So really grow stronger from within. I think a lot of us probably here, or at least I know, we, sp we spend a lot of time and energy in recruiting um, and for recruiting for roles and helping you. We say, how do we get more women into engineering roles? How do we get more minorities into engineering roles? Well, our answer to that is to actually, to actually try to find people who want to from within our organization and put them and allow them to do training and development within our organization for them to have mentorship. We've seen this over and over again, people coming in, uh, again, potentially without a college degree or coming in into a junior role, expressing a desire to go into engineering, expressing desire to go into product management, and for us to just work with them um, on a plan to get them there and to invest in them together. They invest their time and energy, and they're still doing their day job, while we're also investing with them to help them uh, to get these new skills. Um, we invested in the learning and development team at 40 people. We hired our first, or maybe it was 50 people, but at 50 people size company, we hired our first person focused on learning and development because we knew that a key part of our, the way we were going to be able to grow was we were going to have to kind of grow from within and to, to be able to teach and train people, not only functional skills, but also building in leadership development uh, as well as management programs for people across the company as well. Um, so that's been another, you know, a, another big area of focus. So how do we continue to invest and groom our people from within to allow them to take on bigger and bigger responsibility and more opportunity? And then that also creates, you know, different pathways for people then to give back and for people to then mentor others and to help, you know, help the next person kind of get a leg up um, across and promotions across teams. So again, you know, the, these are, you know, what I wanted to share with you is some kind of practical ideas and some things that we've done that we've seen really great success. And I'm sure there's lots of other things in the future that we continue our journey. Um, but, you know, I think these are some things that, you know, people say, you know, how do you, what are you doing over there at WP Engine to have those kinds of, those kinds of statistics? And I just wanted to share these are some of the things that we're doing. And so for us, you know, uh, you know, where there's focus, there's progress. You know, and again, I know, and, you know, we talked about this before, is like, um, I, I've seen so much progress, um, and particularly in the technology industry for women, and so many different types of opportunities for women, um, you know, uh, in, in my 26 years in technology. And I think we're, we've got so much headroom, again, to be a, an, an industry that really drives change, um, that really is a leader in diversity and really making sure that there's opportunities for everyone to succeed uh, and have that opportunity to, to grow. And so again, I think that that really for here, if we think about everyone who's here, the power of the internet, the power of the work that all of you guys are doing, um, you know, how can you drive change? How can you be thinking about what's maybe one or two things you could do differently to really create an opportunity for more women to thrive, uh, more diverse people to thrive in your organization? And so with that, um, thank you very much and appreciate the opportunity to speak with you.